Hello everyone. We're on this question. There are n moles of uh, hydrogen gas and isothermal dissociation of n moles of hydrogen gas takes place at temperature T. You need to find change in the internal energy of the system. There are n moles of hydrogen gas isothermally at temperature T. Dissociation takes place of hydrogen. So, what is the change in internal energy of the system? Answer this. I've got two, three answers so far. And they all are saying zero, which is not correct. This is the hint. It's an isothermal process. Delta U zero is not correct. This is basically the hint. Even though process is an isothermal one, but still delta U zero is not correct. Let me give you the hint. Let's see how many of you are going to answer this question. Before dissociation, what type of gas you have? And after the dissociation, what type of thing you're going to get? Think about it and you can answer the question. So this is the hint. Before and after there is a change look here what is u formula for u m c v t now when you try to answer delta u as zero you basically did what you wrote delta u as n c v delta t and you thought that uh, it's an isothermal process and therefore delta t is what zero and therefore it should be zero that's what your thinking was when you answered that delta u is zero but now look here what is the formula for u n c v t what is u initial n c v c v is 5 r by 2 t diatomic gas When I go for U final, I've got what? When you dissociate H2, you get what? HH, which is what? Monodomic. If it is monodomic, then this CV is what? 3 R by 2 temperature is T. This is for monodomic part. monodomic H. This is diatomic H2. Now, what should, what should appear over here? Can you answer this thing fast? 
This is the end. What should I write here? Answer this fast in the comment box. This is the end. H2. What should I write here? Good. If you dissociate n moles of H2, you get 2n moles of H. n moles, they become what? 2n. H2 becomes H and H. Now, what do we need? Delta U. What is delta U? U final minus U initial. Which is coming what? N R T common. This is 6 by 2. Minus this is 5 by 2. Which becomes N R T by 2. The answer is not 0, but is what? Nr T by 2. And the reason is that if same type of gas is present before and after, mono or dia, then you can simply say delta T is 0 and therefore it should be 0. But in this process of dissociation, N is changing at the same time Cv is also changing. And therefore it's a very good question for school as well as competitive examinations. Note on this and if you understand the profile then write down yes in the comment box. Write down second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics. <clears throat> Let's understand the first law once again. And it will tell us that why do we need a second law type of thing and what second law basically is. The first law is delta Q delta U plus delta W and I hope you remember when I told you that uh, suppose I give you 100 rupees you keep 20 rupees and you give 80 rupees to someone else which is nothing but conservation of energy so this uh, first law is all about COE conservation of total energy आपने 100 जूल हीट सिस्टम को प्रोवाइड की सिस्टम ने उसमें से 20 जूल अपनी इंटरनल एनर्जी को बढ़ाने में यूज कर ली और रिमेनिंग 80 का उसने क्या कर दिया कुछ वर्क सो इट्स ऑल अबाउट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी नाउ लुक हियर सपोज यू हैव अ कप ऑफ टी हॉट टी so and all around you you have the atmosphere you know that heat flow is going to take place from the cup of tea into the surrounding atmosphere If initial temperature of the cup of tea is uh, say 100, then after some time it will decrease and becomes let's say 80 degrees Celsius. T initial is 100, T final is 80. 
So what do we say? Heat is flowing from the cup of tea into the atmosphere. If it flows like this and just for the sake of calculation, let's say uh, the work part, let's keep it zero. Work is what uh, PDV. So you can always assume that uh, everything is isochoric. We can always, in that case, take what? W as zero. If we are interested in work wali part, we want to heat concept ko samajna chahte hain. Ek easy profile ke through. So what yeah? If temperature is decreasing, you know that uh, internal energy is decreasing and everything is correct. Cup of tea, as heat goes out, if it rejects the heat, then delta Q is what? Negative. Delta Q is what? Negative. Temperature is decreasing. Delta U is what? Negative. Delta Q is delta U plus W, which is zero. So everything is correct. Negative is what? Negative. Simple language me kya baat hui? Aap se kisi ne 100 rupees aapki pocket se nikal liye. तो आपकी पॉकेट से कितना पैसा कम हो गया आपकी पॉकेट से कितना पैसा कम हो गया 100 रुपीस सो एवरीथिंग इज करेक्ट एंड जस्टिफाइड दैट्स व्हाट फर्स्ट लॉ टेल्स अस बट नाउ सपोज यू से दैट अ रिवर्स फ्लो ऑफ एनर्जी टेक्स प्लेस फ्रॉम एटमॉस्फेयर टू द कप ऑफ टी if I say that heat is flowing in this direction, shown with this red arrow, if heat flows from atmosphere into the cup of tea, then what would you say? In that case, you are going to say that delta Q is what? positive if delta q is positive then temperature of this cup of tea is going to increase if heat flows in this cup of tea from the atmosphere delta q will be positive if heat is received by the system delta q is positive t will increase if t increases then delta u if temperature increases delta u is what positive now, if you are using first law, then again everything is justified. You are saying that delta Q is positive. Delta U is coming what? Positive. Work, again forget about it. It's zero. Cup of tea, you can see that uh, the volume hardly changes. So we can also justify that W is what? Almost zero. Now, this is the problem with first law. Kya problem aa rahi hai? Pehle is part ko pakarna. First law ke kya bolta hai? That if I take 100 rupees out of your pocket, aapke paas do pocket thi, ek work ki aur ek uh, internal energy ki, if you remember the example the way I gave it to you, forget about that work pocket, it's closed, I cannot touch it. So if I take 100 rupees out, to aapke paas kitna paisa kam ho gaya? 100. Here up. Negative, negative. But if I give you 100 rupees, to phir aapke paas kitna paisa bada gaya? 100. First law go, kahi koi objection nahi hai. First law bolda if heat flows from hot cup of tea into the surrounding atmosphere, use first law temperature of cup of tea is going to decrease because heat is going out heat is being rejected it also tells us that if somehow heat is absorbed by the cup of tea 
from the atmosphere then by the same amount your internal energy is going to increase लेकिन आपको पता है कि हीट का फ्लो हॉट से कोल्ड की तरफ होने वाला है कोल्ड से हॉट की तरफ नहीं बट फर्स्ट लॉ डजेंट हेल्प यू इन दिस रिगार्ड If it doesn't help you in this regard, then we need something else, and that something else is what second law of thermodynamics. A simple say example say, this cheese ko samasthe hai, puri kahani ko. Why why do we need uh, second law, and then we'll write statements for second law. This everything which you see on the board <coughs> is just so that you can feel it. In the for for the feeling part, I am giving you another example. <coughs> Suppose you are on the road, going somewhere, and you see a beggar. So what do you do? You take the beggar's hand. 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 Take the और उस भिखारी के पास टेन रुपीज क्या हो गए ज्यादा फर्स्ट लॉ ओनली टेल्स अस दैट कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मनी टेन आपकी पॉकेट से निकला टेन उसकी पॉकेट में गया बट ये भी तो हो सकता था कि आप जा रहे थे और भिखारी ने आपको टेन रुपीज दे दिए फर्स्ट लॉ बोलता है कि कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है अगर भिखारी ने आपको टेन रुपीज दे दिए दैगर गिट्स यू दैन रुपीज अमाउंट उसके पास टैंक कम हो गया तुम्हारे पास टैंक क्या हो गया ज्यादा इसको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है कंजर्वेशन ऑफ मनी इज स्टिल वैलिड बट यू नो दैट इन दैट केस सेकंड लॉ इज गोइंग टू टेल यू कि भिखारी बेसिकली है कौन एंड देयर फोर हु इज द बैगर दैट विल बी डिसाइडेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ सेकंड लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडायनेमिक्स फर्स्ट लॉ दोनों केस में डिफ्रेंशिएट नहीं कर सकता नो डाउन दिस मच एंड टेल मी फर्स्ट आर यू कंफर्टेबल विद दिस पार्ट दैट व्हाई डू वी नीड अ सेकंड लॉ व्हाई फर्स्ट लॉ अलोन इज नॉट सफिशिएंट व्हाट इज द बेसिक रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ सेकंड लॉ दैट हैज बीन टोल्ड टू दी आई दिस एग्जांपल नो डाउन हाउ मच वट यू कैन and then we'll write everything in a proper way write down the statement first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics is all about conservation of energy is all about conservation of energy it does not tell us it doesn't tell us direction of heat flow it doesn't tell us direction of heat flow If a hot cup of tea is placed in a room, then we find that after some time, its temperature decreases. Because heat energy is going out from the cup into the surrounding atmosphere but if somehow 
if somehow from the surrounding atmosphere heat can be transferred into the cup of tea then according to the first law temperature of cup of tea will increase temperature of the cup of tea will increase and that of the surrounding will decrease which we know is not possible next line this direction of energy flow this direction of energy flow requires another law in the form of second law of thermodynamics in the form of second law of thermodynamics again very simple example when I drop this marker it is coming down as it comes down its kinetic energy decrease uh, kinetic energy increases and potential energy decreases it is coming down but if you play the video in reverse if you capture the whole thing and then you play in reverse then this same marker will be going up increase in potential energy decrease in kinetic energy first law says everything is good but second law will tell us that marker can only move from up to down it cannot move from this point to this point on its own so this is something which requires second law of thermodynamics now write down what basically second law is next line according to the second law of thermodynamics according to the second law of thermodynamics entropy according to the second law of thermodynamics entropy inside the bracket disorderness disorderness of an isolated system of an isolated system can never decrease entropy of an isolated system disorderness of an isolated system can never decrease underline the isolated part because it's uh, very much required i'll give you another form of second law but let's understand this disorderness part first an isolated part <clears throat> now Suppose uh, when you place uh, water in refrigerator, in the freezer compartment, what happens that after some time it freezes and you get what ice. Initially what was happening in that container, all the water molecules, they were moving randomly. That random motion is nothing but disorderness. They're moving in all possible directions. So it has much higher entropy. The moment you put this container into the refrigerator, freezer box compartment, after some time it freezes, these molecules, let's say that random motion now disappears. 
So that entropy part has what decreased. So the law says what? The law says that entropy cannot decrease. But this example which I gave you of the refrigerator, in this, what you find is that entropy, jo disorder is, wo kya ho gayi hai? Decrease. Lekin ek problem hai. This refrigerator is not an isolated part. Ye refrigerator, ye fridge aapka kiske saath connected hai? Power supply. And this power supply is connected to This power supply is connected to a power generating station, a dam. Now, at that particular dam or coal power station, what basically is happening? Let's take the example of a simple dam. What happens? Water is dropped from certain height onto the blades of turbines. So, Water, let's say it's not moving right now. Let's not talk about the individual molecules. That water is at rest and then is dropped. When you drop it, this disorderness, this random movement of the molecules that increases. Now once it hits the turbines, again that disorderness increases. Entropy is increasing. These turbine blades, they are connected to a dynamo which produces what current. Current means electrons are moving. Again, electrons which were not moving, assuming they were at, at rest. Now, once you drop the water on the turbine blades, it starts rotating. Electrons start moving, which is called what current. So this movement of electron is again what? Increase in the entropy. This power supply is now connected to the refrigerator and in that refrigerator a small part of that is freezing, the water part which is freezing, over there only entropy is decreasing. But if you look at the entire system, entire system means that water, turbine, movement of electrons and water inside the refrigerator. This whole thing will be called what an isolated part. That refrigerator on its own is not an isolated thing. So if you look at the entire system, dam, connecting wires, refrigerator, water inside, then overall you will find that entropy is still increasing. Now, if you have a refrigerator which is disconnected, doesn't have any water supply, put water inside, nothing happens. Why? Because in that case, this refrigerator on its own, without any power connection, is an isolated system. If it is an isolated system, then that water cannot freeze because second law tells us disorderness of an isolated system can never decrease. Do you understand the meaning of isolated part? Yes or no? Write down fast in the comment box. Good. So the first statement of second law of thermodynamics is what? Uh, if you have a system, its disorderness, randomness, entropy part can never decrease provided you have an isolated part. Now, Let's write down another statement for the second law. And this second uh, statement will give you much better feeling. Any type of perpetual machine, second way of explaining, second law of thermodynamics, any type of perpetual machine Perpetual means something which runs on its own. Any type of perpetual machine is not possible. Any type of perpetual machine, inside the bracket, a machine that runs on its own. 
a machine that runs on its own is not possible. What is the meaning of perpetual something which runs on its own? For say, uh, easy sa example let them. Abne kya kya ki jo apna ceiling fan hai, us ceiling fan ke saath humne ek uh, ek rod connect ki, aur us rod ko ek dynamo se connect kar diya. Aur fir jo dynamo ka feeding wire hai, usko ceiling fan ke saath connect kar diya. Ab hua kya ki jab ye ceiling fan rotate karega. So that shaft which is connected to the dynamo, dynamo blades rotate karenge. So what will happen? Energy, electricity transfer will And that electricity will be transferred to what? Ceiling fan. And who will rotate karega? Dynamo ko. Dynamo kisko chalayega? Fan ko. That's called what? A perpetual machine. Aapne must easy hawa khai. Power connection aapne hada diya. आपको बिजली का बिल भरने की जरूरत नहीं है लाइफ ऐश में चल रही है आपकी बट देन गेम सेकंड लॉ इट टेल्स अस नो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट पॉसिबल एट ऑल क्यों जब आप फैन से डायनामो को कनेक्ट करोगे यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट अ पार्ट ऑफ एनर्जी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फ्रिक्शन will be released so that loss is there and that loss of friction means you are creating what external heat and all basically you are increasing the entropy Now, what did you do? number wise baat kare ki suppose 100 joule was trans 100 joules is the energy of ceiling fan out of this 100 joule when you connect it to the dynamo only let's say half of that is transferred 50 joule remaining goes into what frictional heat part so out of 150 is gone what is that 50 now when this 50 is transferred to the dynamo it produces electricity electricity means what electrons are moving when these electrons are moving in the wire they collide with each other in that process, they again create what? Heat. This heat loss means out of 50, only 25 will be transferred to the ceiling fan. And again, when this 25 is being transferred to the dynamo, half of that 12.5 is received. Rest is going what? In the friction. The ball bearings and all. Blades, they are touching what? The air all around and a collision takes place between the blades of the ceiling fan and air molecules. That is creating what? Disorderness. Increasing what? Randomness. Creating what? Frictional energy. So every time this process, you repeat the process, there is a loss of energy and after some time the whole setup is going to die out. It's not possible to run the whole thing on its own because in this system, entropy or that loss of heat which you know takes place. You can never develop any type of system where things are perpetual. Now, before the second law was uh, developed, people have a lot of effort to make a setup in which a lot of water was filled in a very high tank. नीचे एक टरबाइन लगा दिया टरबाइन डायनामो से कनेक्ट हो गया डायनामो एक वाटर पंप से कनेक्ट हो गया वाटर पंप उस टैंक को फिल करने के लिए यूज हुआ अ प्रोसेस क्या थी कि फ्रॉम दैट हाई टैंक वाटर इज ड्रॉप्ड ऑन द टरबाइंस टरबाइंस ने क्या जनरेट की पावर एंड दे वांटेड टू यूज दिस पावर आल्सो अगर ये पावर यूज नहीं करते तब भी सेटअप नहीं चलता बट व्हाट दे डिड दे वांटेड टू यूज पावर आउट ऑफ दिस डायनामो एंड अ पार्ट ऑफ दैट होल एनर्जी वाज ट्रांसफर्ड बैक टू द वाटर पंप एंड 
back on top to that uh, the whole thing which contains the water. But this type of cider is something which is perpetual and can never run on its own. Now you know the whole thing in just one line. If I start with MGH which is 100 joules and if this 100 joule is transferred to the dynamo then only 90, 80, 70 thing will be transferred. Rest will be what? Energy which cannot be used because of friction and all. And then 70 ka 30, 30 ka 10, ultimately puri ki puri energy kya ho jayegi? Khat ho jayegi. You always need what? An external input of energy so that every time from 100 it becomes 80, you can supply that loss of 20. Varna toh aapne kya kiya? Aapne ek bar gaari go on kiya. Aap ho chal rahi hai. But you need constant input of energy that petrol is burning it is giving you energy so that you can overcome what frictional resistance aap aisa system banai nahi sakte ki aapne kya kiya aapne ek car banai uske upar aapne ek wind mill type ka wind power type ka setup laga diya your car is moving electric vehicle electric car आपका wind power से आपने car को जन power दिया as car is moving it is creating what air thrust उसे wind mill is giving back power to your car and things are running that will be called what perpetual machine second law tells us it's not possible why because entropy ये क्या करेगी problem create करेगी isolated system you can never decrease entropy and the whole thing says every time disorderness, the randomness of the molecules that is increasing. So this is about the perpetual system. Now right on another format, another way of stating second law, right on that. It is not possible to it is not possible to transfer energy it is not possible to transfer energy from a low temperature source low temperature source to a high temperature sink something which receives will be called sink this is source. It is not possible to transfer energy from a high temperature source to a sorry what did I say? I think uh, the statement went wrong. So write down the whole thing again and maybe I said things correct. So it's not, it's not possible to construct it's not possible to construct a system in which energy flows from low temperature source to high temperature sink from low temperature source to high temperature sink without using without using external input without using external input kya kahani hai har aadmi ko batai ki air conditioner kya karta hai air conditioner is doing what it is taking heat out from your room and is throwing this heat into the surrounding part outside the room which is much hotter our statement kya tha aap kabhi bhi kam temperature wale ilake se zyada temperature wale ilake mein heat transfer nahi kar sakte kam temperature se zyada without using an external input external energy source 
और रेफ्रिजरेट और दैट एयर कंडीशनर एयर कंडीशनर इज डूइंग व्हाट आपका रूम है मान लीजिए 25 पर इमेजिन विंटर सभी ठंड के टाइम तो नहीं इमेजिन समर टाइम नॉट विंटर इमेजिन द समर टाइम तो आपके रूम का टेंपरेचर बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट एयर कंडीशनर इज से 22 एंड आउटसाइड टेंपरेचर इज व्हाट 45 that air conditioner it does what it is taking heat from the room which is already at 22 and is throwing this heat out into the surrounding atmosphere which is at a temperature of 45 but the whole thing needs what power supply that energy input is required switch off the ac and it cannot transfer energy from the room a much colder space into the surrounding much hotter space you need what always an input of energy everything all these three profiles which i told you they are basically what same they are telling you what there is no way you can decrease disorderness of an isolated system अगर आपने सिस्टम की डिसऑर्डरनेस कम करनी है तो फिर आपको अलग से कहीं से एनर्जी देनी पड़ेगी अगर आपको उस वाटर आइस वाले केस में डिसऑर्डरनेस डिक्रीज करनी है तो कहीं डैम पर जाकर आपको डिसऑर्डरनेस बढ़ानी पड़ेगी एंड ओवरऑल योर एंट्रोपी योर डिसऑर्डरनेस can never decrease tell me are you comfortable with all three statements and everything i told you about cup of tea atmosphere air conditioner ceiling fan dynamo water tank are you comfortable with all these things yes or no Now, this entropy thing is represented in this form. If you transfer dq heat at temperature T, then change in entropy is ds. That's how we mathematically develop concept of entropy this is small change you can write delta delta but let's use ds this is your small change in entropy and this is the small amount of heat supplied small amount of heat supplied s for entropy ds for change in entropy if to produce a change of ds you supply dq heat at temperature t now why do we use d because when you are supplying heat it's quite possible that t will change so if t changes if i say that i gave you i gave a system 100 joules of energy but in that process of temperature is changing from 20 to 80 then how do you find this that will be done with the help of integration so ds equals to dq upon t is the mathematical version of entropy the disorderness part is this which tells us that uh, you can answer very easy profiles on this thing um, let's see how many of you are going to answer this what is the change in entropy change in entropy for an adiabatic process 
What is the change in adiabatic process? Uh, mm, change in entropy for an adiabatic process. Good. Zero. So one line statement. Not supplying any heat and therefore it's coming what? Zero. Now write down this as a statement. For an adiabatic process, for an adiabatic process, change in entropy is zero. Now, who will answer this? What is a change in entropy for an isothermal process? What is change in uh, entropy for an isothermal process? Change in entropy for an isothermal process. Now, one of you wrote infinite, it's T, it's not DT. So T is not zero. DT is zero, but I don't have DT term in the end term of the equation of entropy. When I ask you what is change in entropy for an isothermal process, you will start with this. If it's an isothermal process, T is constant. Take it out. Integration of dQ will give you delta Q. dQ means uh, that dQ is what small heat supplied. That small heat, small heat, small heat is what large heat. You can call it delta Q. Or you can simply say Q, doesn't matter. You can write Q also. Let's remove the delta part. What is dQ? Small. And we are looking for change in dS. Change in dS means S initial, S final. What is integration of dS? S limits. S initial, S final. Or you put limits S final minus S initial. What is this? Delta S. So what is the integration of dS? Delta S. What is dS? What is dS? Small change. What is delta S? Large change. From this to this, height change is one centimeter. Another one, 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 one. What is change from this to this? 1 plus 1 plus 1. This is what big change. These are what small changes. So we need this dq upon d every time your t is constant and therefore integration is quite easy. For an isothermal process you know this q has two things. Change in internal plus work. And how much is change in internal energy for an isothermal process? Zero. And what is the formula of work? N R T log V final upon V initial. So what is delta S coming? T and T cancelled. N R log V final upon V initial. This part is what change in entropy when process is what isothermal. Put on everything. Find out delta S. 
for an isochoric process. And temperature changes from T to 4D. It's an isochoric process and therefore T is going to change. From T it becomes 4T. Can you get me delta S? Let's see how many of you can. It got around 30, 40 seconds. So we need what delta S, which is a uh, delta Q upon T. What is delta Q for isochoric? Delta Q is delta U plus delta W. Delta W is zero. Delta U is N C V delta T. This is N C V delta T is what? 4T minus T, 3T. Divided by T. Which is giving us 3N C V. Do you understand this? Yes or no? Only one person says no and all others are saying yes, this is wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Who will tell me what went wrong? Who is going to tell me why is this whole thing wrong? And almost everybody had answered the same thing 3NCV. Go down like this and make a cross, cross, cross. Who's going to tell me what went wrong? I guess no one. This teaches us that uh, why we do not prefer delta and we prefer D. DQ upon T. It's an isochoric process. T is going to change continuously. You give it some heat at temperature T. It receives the heat, temperature increases. So let's say you start with 10. You give it some heat, temperature becomes 11. You give it some heat, temperature becomes 12. You give it some heat, temperature becomes 13 and so on. If you directly wrote delta S and delta Q and use delta Q as delta U plus delta W, then you are saying that throughout T is same. Lekin asa to hoi nahi raha hai. To mene aapko kya sikha hai? Mene aapko yeh sikha hai bhai. This is physics. When things are changing, we go for very fundamental form, differential form, ds equals to dq upon t. Ab yeh bachcho ka khel hai. Kaise hai? dq, har aadmi ko pata hai kya hota hai? du plus dw. Divided by T. What type of process we have? Isochoric. If it is an isochoric one, we know that DW is always zero. This is what? DU upon T. What is DU? N C V D T divided by T. What are the things which I can take out? N and C V and I am left with what? D T upon T. Can you integrate D T upon T? Yes, you can. So what is the integration of D T upon T? L and T. 
dx upon x. What do I need? Change. Lower limit, upper limit. For S, initial temperature is T. For S, final temperature is 4D. Lower and upper limit. What is the integration of DS? S. Upper limit. Lower limit. And CV log upper limit log lower limit S upper lower well this is what is delta S is coming what N CV N CV ln4 log A minus log B is log A upon B N CV ln4 is the correct answer. You cannot start out like this. The delta S is delta Q upon T. Let's find out delta Q and then in the end we'll divide the whole thing by T. You cannot do that because every time you add that small amount of heat divided by temperature at that particular moment ratio is defined as what ds and this thing is continuously changing because temperature is changing how many of you understand this answer if you understand this part write down yes if you do not then write down no Let's see how fast you are. Let it be an isobaric process. If it is an isobaric process, then for same change in the temperature, what would be the answer? For isobaric, what is the answer? We've got around 15 seconds to answer this. The time starts now. For isobaric, change in temperature is T. From T to 4 D. What is delta S? Only one response and that is also not correct. What type of process you have? Isobaric. If it is an isobaric process, uh, you will start with what? DS. Same thing. DQ upon D. DU plus DW. What is du and cv dt dw is pdv whole divided by t that's your ds and then you are going to integrate it this is correct dq is du plus dw du will be this dw is this divided by t but i gave you only 15 seconds so 15 seconds tells us that delta S is and once you understand the answer you will write yes in the comment box. If you understand the answer you will write yes in the comment box. Kuch karna hai nita. If I if I have this result for isocore for isobaric कौन टाइम बर्बाद करेगा ये सब करने में? Done. If you understand it, write down yes. जब आपको समझ में आ जाए क्या हुआ, write down yes. And then मैं समझाऊंगा बाद में आपको. So far I've got only two yes, three. Taking too long. Look, let's save time. Kali Kalna may have to DS. What is that? DQ divided by T. But what is CP? 
CP is DQ divided by NDT. That's how you define molar specific heat capacity at constant pressure. So it gives us what? It tells us that this DQ simply becomes N CP DT divided by T. In terms of CP, you can write this. This whole thing is nothing but this. This PDV is nothing but NRDT. Take N R common, you get CV plus R. From Mayer's formula, CV minus CV equals to R. Directly Up, this is N C V D T divided by T. And this is what? N C V D T divided by T. Bahar kona gaya N C V. What is inside? D T upon T. Bahar kona aega N C P. What is that which you need to integrate? D T upon T. The puri gani same hui na yaar. Kewal C V ko kisse replace karna tha? CP say. Now do you understand how come you could have answered this thing in just 15 seconds? So when I asked you that you can answer the question in 15 seconds, I meant it. Replace CV with CV and you will get it. You can write the whole thing in terms of result for for ISO Baric Delta S is NCP LN V final upon V initial. Uh, this NCP NCB and after integration you get LN4. What is LN4 basically? Uh, not V final upon V initial, T final upon T initial. Write down T final upon T initial. This is delta S for an isobaric and for isochoric. I hope everything is visible. NCV log T final upon T initial. Right on Carnot cycle. I'll introduce you with this Carnot cycle and then we'll handle the whole thing in detail in the next lecture. But uh, I'll give you some homework also from this. P V. What is Carnot cycle? It's a cyclic process. Starts from A, B, C, D. This AB is an isothermal process at temperature T1. This T1 is a uh, Temperature of source C 
CD curve is again an isothermal process but at temperature T2 which is called the temperature of sink high temperature to low temperature heat transfer only hai. this is called and the part BC it's an adiabatic part and this DA is also an adiabatic part so what the whole Carnot cycle is from A to B isothermally at temperature T1 we are increasing the volume then from B to C adiabatically we are increasing the volume from A to C volume is increasing first isothermally then adiabatically from C to D volume is decreased at temperature T2 again isothermally these are isothermal parts this is also isothermal remember this part is also isothermal so from C to D isothermally volume is decreased at temperature T2 and then from D to A adiabatically adiabatically volume is further decreased and the whole setup arrives at the initial position if it arrives at the initial position it's a cyclic process you know that delta U for the system will be what? zero now I am giving you a homework part we will discuss why do we need Carnot cycle and all what uh, basically I need the whole thing is I want you to get me a relation between VA VB T1 T2 VC VD these type of things you have to have a relationship between volume at A, volume at B, volume at C, volume at D, temperature T1, temperature T2. And the things which you need for this are PV equals to NRT and PV gamma equals to constant. Using these two, try to develop a relation between volume as well as if you can you can also use pressure at A, pressure at B, pressure at C will need what uh, will be we need work from A to B we need work from C to D and these are what isothermal things and in isothermal process you know work is what NRT log V final upon V initial so relationship between volumes and temperature is something which will need in Carnot cycle the whole thing has four components as you can see in the figure other than this figure and the information that temperature is T1 throughout because it's an isothermal part adiabatic part, isothermal part, adiabatic part and this the help of these two and this figure you don't even need this you can always find relationship between these things this is the homework for you and then we'll see why do we need Carnot cycle in second law of thermodynamics put on the homework part and then you can leave Thank you very much.